You may wonder, I know you're all wondering, why is it wrapped up in wire? Well, this is extremely endangered species. And it was, of course, the source of the cancer drug Taxol. When they found out about it, which, by the way, we, the taxpayers of the United States, paid for all that research, and Bristol Myers Squibb made all the profit. Mm. That needs to change. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a little baby that we planted here because there were so many of them removed from the forest to make Taxol that it's just been devastating. So we're, we have this all protected so nothing eats it and no one harvests it or anything like that so it can grow up and be big. This is an ugly tree. When it gets big, it's real crooked, it's bent, it looks really scraggly. So that they never used it as lumber because it's not a straight tree, but it's also incredibly hard wood, but it will bend. So this is the best bow wood in the Northwest. The orange Osage that's more in the Southeast is better for bows. It's less likely to crack, but we don't have that here. So this was revered for making bows. And its needles are anti-cancer. The bark is anti-cancer. And I do use a tincture <coughs> of the needles, which this is not it, this is red cedar, uh, to treat cancer patients. And there's just a tiny little bit of Taxol in there, but I don't care. There's all sorts of other good stuff, or bad stuff, I don't know. You can overdose on it. You can definitely get poisoned. It will attack the nerves in your body and make you start getting numb and tingling and stuff. I've never seen that happen with the crude extract. Um, I have a very good friend named Michael Polarski, who's a wild crafter up in the, uh, near Twisp. And he tells a story of a couple of dogs with muscle cancer that were cured by drinking tea of this bark. I didn't see it, but I believe him. Uh, so who knows? This makes a little red, what looks like a berry, and it's got a black seed that you can see poking out of the end of it. That's actually like a pine cone, even though it looks like a berry. It's called an A-rail, if you must know. But the red part is fine. You can eat the red part. It's actually delicious. The black seed, though, is incredibly poisonous. And that was used as arrow poison. They would grind it up, mix it with some water, rub it on the arrow tips. And this was done also in Europe, because there's a species that grows in Europe, and there's a species that grows in Asia. And everywhere it grew, they used it for arrow poison. <laughs> so it's definitely something I would not say anyone here should be like, I'm going to drink a tea of that for fun, you know? Like, this you need some help with, some supervision, but it's is again to kind of highlight these incredible resources that are all around us that we kind of take for granted and we don't realize when they're being wiped out. Too. How about the ones you buy like at the nursery with the little red berries? Yeah, so those are probably European yew trees, the Texas ricotta, which are fine though. Yeah. But they, do, they have the same properties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the major difference between the if I, if I identification between the this so it, it's it's main stem, like this is very straight. Okay. It's bent. It'll go bend, oh, bend, okay. and it has many more low branches that are also bent, and they're not as even as smooth as this. So lots of bends and side. Okay. Um, and then if you look at the needles, you'll see they're really, really different. I don't know how well to describe them.